right, this is the third book for the California Young Reader nominee for the older readers. So it is entitled Sergeant Reckless, the true story of the little horse who became a hero. Patricia McCormick and I Copo Bruno is the illustrator. Here's the title page. Bla Blazer Bowser Bray is the publishing company. The small red mare whinnied for her supper, but Korea was at war. Towns were shattered, fields were scorched, and the racetrack was abandoned. No one paid attention to the hungry little horse. Nearby, U.S. Marines were exhausted from hauling heavy ammunition uphill to a powerful new cannon nicknamed the Reckless Rifle. That's when their leader, Lieutenant Eric Peterson, had an idea. What if he could get a mule to carry the shells? But all Lieutenant Peterson could find was a scrawny sorrel mare with a white blaze and three matching socks. She wasn't much, but she reminded him of a horse he had had as a boy. So he took, he took a chance on her. Back at the base, as the Marines gathered around to meet the new recruit, Lieutenant Peterson realized he'd forgotten to buy hay. Well, one of the men held out a piece of bread. The mare gobbled it up. Then she devoured the rest of the loaf. Another man offered her some oatmeal. She licked the bowl clean. She was pretty. The Marines agreed, but she was small. How could she carry such heavy ammunition? And how would she react when she heard the thunder of the cannon? A mule was slow and steady, but a racehorse was high strung and skittish. She'd have to go through special training and should start out at the same rank as any newbie private. Private Reckless. The first thing Private Reckless had to learn was to duck incoming fire, which meant that her trainer, Sergeant Joseph Latham, had to teach her to kneel down. First, he gave her a sugar cube every time he tapped her front leg, then another one when she knelt down. Before long, the greedy little horse knelt down the moment he tapped her leg. Well, Reckless also had to learn to retreat when Latham gave the command, she had to trot back to her bunker where another reward was waiting. An apple or a chocolate candy bar or a peanut butter sandwich, even a can of beans, whatever it was, Reckless ate it. Next, Latham led her up the hill to the cannon with a little coaxing and a lot of chocolate. She'd soon follow Latham anywhere. Finally, she was uh, fitted with a pack saddle, a padded wooden cargo fra frame with leather straps across her chest and legs. Unlike a racing saddle, it was big and bulky and constricting. Well, Latham cinched up the girth and the man stood back, expecting her to try to throw it off. Reckless just stood there. They looked, they loaded ammunition shells onto her pack and waited for her to buck, but she just put her head down and marched up the hill. 
Her reward that day was an ice cold Coca Cola. Well, by now, Reckless thought of herself as a member of the company and was free to roam the camp. Well, one morning, she showed up at the mess hall where the cook gave her an apple. She nudged his shoulder for more. So he offered her scrambled eggs and toast. From then on, she ate the same breakfast as the men and washed it down with a cup of coffee. Well, after she figured out which bunk belonged to the cook, she'd clip-clop into his tent at daybreak and lick his face until he woke up and served her breakfast. The men began looking forward to seeing the little horse with the big appetite when they went to the chow hall. They had come to love her, but deep down they worried that when it came to a real battle, she might not have what it takes. Well, one day, the Marines spotted enemy troops approaching. Instantly, they went into battle mode. Private Monroe Coleman saddled up reckless and led her to the top of the hill. Boom! Just as they were delivering their load, the cannon went off. A blast of hot air sent dust and gravel flying toward the horse. Reckless jumped straight up in the air, even with six shells on her back. Easy girl, Coleman said, stroking her mane. Boom! The cannon roared again. She jumped, but not so high this time. Boom! Well, this time, Reckless just snorted. By the next time the gun went off, Reckless was busy eating a helmet liner that she'd found in the grass. From then on, Reckless was one of the guys. On cold nights, she snuck into Latham's tent and slept on the floor. And when the men played poker, she joined in. One night, she'd eaten about $30 worth of poker chips before they caught on. Reckless served in more skirmishes, but her most dangerous assignment came at the Battle of Outpost Vegas. That night, the men awoke to shells and white hot flares flying right inside the base. Reckless trotted back to her bunker, trembling and for the first time, she refused to eat. But the minute she was loaded with her pack, Reckless got to work. At the base of the path, she took a deep breath, pricked her ears forward, charged the hill. Without a word of urging, she broke into a trot and then a gallop. The heavy shells banged against her sides as she hit the steep incline. The first rays of dawn were lighting the sky as she arrived at the top of the trail. Her flanks heaving. The sky was full of smoke. Shells whizzed by and cannons boomed. All day, Reckless marched up and down the windy path hauling her load. As she passed her fellow Marines along the way, they gave her their chocolate bars or kept up to keep up her strength. Then a piece of shrapnel hit Reckless over her left eye. Blood trickled down onto her white blaze, but she kept going. Later, another piece of shrapnel hit her left flank. After a dab of iodine and a drink of water, she was back at work. Night fell as sizzling flares cast eerie shadows on the landscape. The Marines were beginning to tire, but they saw the little mare silhouetted on the ridge, her head hanging as she put everything she had 
into her job. She was soaked in sweat, lather curled up over her saddle. When she came back down the hill, one by one, the men took off their body armor jackets and laid them over her for protection. Well, by the end of the day, Reckless had made 51 trips, gone a distance of 35 miles up and down steep terrain, carried 9,000 pounds of ammunition. That battle helped change the course of the war. At last, there was a ceasefire and Reckless was able to rest. The Marines promoted Reckless to sergeant and then they came one by one to say goodbye to the little mare who had shown as much heart on the battlefield as any man among them. When they got home, they started a campaign to bring Reckless to the United States. Well, the ship owner agreed to pay her passage and the men took on a collection to buy her a beautiful scarlet and gold blanket when sergeants, with sergeant stripes. By, but by the time the boat arrived, Reckless had eaten her blanket, ribbons and all. Sergeant Reckless, the little mare who became a Marine, is the only animal to officially hold military rank. She received two purple hearts and retired with full military honors and the rank of staff sergeant. Her story is a testament to the mysterious bond between humans and animals and proof of the Marine Corps motto, Semper Fidelis, Ever Faithful. This is the author's note. The Korean War started in 1850 when troops from the North crossed the dividing line between communist-backed North Korea and American-backed South Korea. The fighting went on for three years and Americans were concerned that a wide war, a wider war uh, with the Soviet Union or China would erupt setting off a third world war. Finally, after nearly 5 million military and civilian deaths, the fighting ceased. No peace treaty was ever signed and the Korean Peninsula is still divided today. I first learned about Sergeant Reckless from a Veterans Day article in the New York Times featuring the cook from the 5th Marine Regiment anti-tank company. It turned out that Sergeant John T. Myers, who made Reckless her morning coffee and eggs, lived not far from me and was happy to talk about the little horse who ate everything in sight. In the mornings, she poked her head into his tent and licked him until he woke up. Then she would follow him to the mess hall. While Sergeant Reckless was famous for her appetite, it was her heroism on the battlefield that made her a legend. In one battle, she rescued a group of men who were pinned down by enemy fire, allowing them to escape as she shielded them. Later, she carried wounded Marines from the hill. Reckless displayed her fearlessness and big heart early on. She was originally owned by a Korean boy, Kim Huck Moon, who named her Flame because of her reddish coat and her fiery speed on the racetrack. But when war broke out in Seoul, Kim had to flee, hitching Flame to a cart filled with his family's belongings. The last bridge out of town was too crowded to cross, so Kim unharnessed Flame and led her to the river's edge. With Kim's little sister clinging to her tail, Flang swam to the other side, then came back and one by one she ferried his niece, nephew, and mother to safety. 
Later, when his sister stepped on the landmine, Kim was devastated that he had to sell Blade to pay for his little sister's medical care. After Reckless came to the United States, she lived, on her day, lived out her days in a grassy compound at Camp Pendleton in California and mothered three foals, Fearless, Dauntless, and Chesty. An official letter about her retirement care specified that she be given Coca-Cola in limited amounts and scrambled eggs lightly solid, salted, without pepper. She is now honored with a life-size statue at the National Museum of the Marine Corps in Quantico, Virginia. The End.